All right. Well, how many of you are expecting to hear from the Lord tonight? Amen. Every time we come, right? Well, let's just pray before we get into the word. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and we just thank you tonight for your word that is alive, and it is powerful, and it is active. And we thank you, Lord, for on-time words. We just thank you for that tonight, Lord, on-time words for uh, us individually, but also for us corporately. We thank you, Lord, that in your word is everything that we need. It is the answers. It is the encouragement. It is the supply that we need. So we expect that tonight. We make much of your word, and we give it honor and reverence tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, tonight I'm going to talk on um, courage to continue. Sorry, I'm taking a drink real quick. All right, courage to continue. This is a good thing, courage to continue. How many of you know it takes courage sometimes to continue in what God has asked us to do or in life? It takes courage to keep moving forward. How many of you know that? How many of you have ever been at a place before where you need courage? You need courage to keep going. And so I believe this is just an on-time word for us tonight courage to continue. So how many of you know you never come to the place in your life where you have too much encouragement? Right? You're never like, please stop encouraging me. I've had enough. I can't do any more. I've had enough today, maybe tomorrow. Right? How many of you know encouragement is a godly thing? It's something that he has for us because he knows we need it to keep going to keep moving forward. So all of us need encouragement. And how many of you know there's times in our lives where sometimes we need more encouragement than other days? Some days we need more encouragement than other days, right? But how many of you know God is so faithful? He's faithful to give us what we need when we need it, and we can expect that. So there's also times in our lives where Maybe we're at a crossroad, and maybe some of you are there, but you're at a crossroad where you're like, I'm on the verge of either it's, it's keeping on going or quitting. How many of you have been there? I've been there before, and I thank the Lord for encouragement from his word, from people who have given me something. It's like that boost of energy that you need right when you need it to keep going. Why? Because God is so faithful. He's so faithful. And how many of you know quitting is not an option? We can't even let that be an option in our mind to quit. But how many of you know the thoughts want to come that it would just be easier to quit? Or it would just be better if I quit? Or maybe these people would be better off if I just stopped? All those lies of the enemy that he wants to paint to you that it would be better for you to quit. But how many of you know it's not? It's not better for you to quit. God has called you to a purpose, to a plan, and your life doesn't just depend on it, but other people's lives depend on you not quitting. I mean, I'm so thankful. I think of the people in my life, especially like elders or people that I really look up to, and I think, man, I'm so thankful they didn't quit because my life would be affected, right? Okay, so um, the definition of encourage is to give support and advice to someone so that they will do or continue to do something. How many of you know encouragement does two things? It helps you maybe do something that you're not doing, but encouragement can also help you continue to do something that you are doing. So encouragement is both ways. It can, I can encourage someone maybe in, in an area, and they haven't been doing that, and because of my encouragement, it helps them start that. But I can also encourage someone because they are, they're going and they're doing it, but my encouragement just gives them that greater boost that they need to continue to do something. And how many of you know, we are called, we're going to talk about this here at, toward the end of our sermon, my sermon here, but we are called to encourage. Encourage. Encourage others. 
we're going to talk about this. Encourage yourself. You're called to encourage. So there will be resistance to the road or path that God has for your life. How many of you know we are called to overcome? We are called to be victorious. But how many of you know it doesn't just happen because it's supposed to happen? How many of you know it's going to take courage to do what God's called you to do? It's going to take you keeping on going, right? So you are going to need encouragement to continue. And this, this word continue, I've said it a couple times um, recently when I've ministered, but this word continue is just something that the Lord has just kept bringing up to me, the importance of continuing. What does it talk about? Don't grow weary in well-doing. Don't grow weary. In other words, keep continuing on. Okay, let's look at First Thessalonians 3. Can you turn me up just a, a teeny bit, just so I don't have to strain quite as much? Um, 1 Thessalonians 3, 1 through 8, and, and we're going to look at this um, passage of Scripture here. And um, it says, therefore, when we could no longer endure it. How many of you have ever been there before? <laughs> we thought it good to be left in Athens alone. And sent Timothy, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and encourage you concerning your faith. So what do we see here? Paul actually, they sent somebody to do what? To encourage. So not only just encourage, but to establish. So what do we see here? That the gospel, when it's preached, when it's brought through your mouth, through your lips, it is to establish you, but it's also to do something else, to encourage you. So when, when Timothy was sent, he helped establish this group of believers, but you know what he also was sent to do? To encourage them. This is what is so key. Okay, we'll keep reading here. That no one should be shaken by these afflictions, for you yourselves know that we are appointed to this. So what was this saying? Hey, there's been some afflictions. There's been some persecutions. In other words, there's been some things that have wanted to keep us from doing what God's called us to do. So guess what they realized? We need to not just from afar pray for the believers and hope that they get through it, but they saw it so needful that they sent Timothy to help establish and to encourage them. Okay, so verse 4 says this, For in fact, we told you before when we were with you that we would suffer tribulation, just as it happened, and you know, for this reason, when I could no longer endure it, I sent to, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter had tempted you, and our labor might be in vain. Verse 6. Now that Timothy has come to us from you. So what do we see here? Sounded like Paul needed a little encouragement too. So what did he know? Hey, I can send Timothy, have him preach the gospel, go to these saints, help establish them, help encourage them. But then Paul was also encouraged because of what Timothy brought back to him. Isn't this just how God works? That I might need encouragement, but I'm bringing encouragement. And that person who got encouragement is also bringing encouragement to me. This is just how good God is. So, um, sorry, brought us good news of your faith and love and that you always have good remembrance of us, greatly desiring to see us as we also desire to see you. Therefore, brethren, in all our affliction and distress, we were comforted concerning you by your faith. Isn't this awesome? So they sent Timothy to be an encouragement. Timothy did that. And then you know what happened? He came back and encouraged Paul. By what? The testimony of how the believers were doing there. And it brought encouragement to Paul in his affliction. So what do we see? There is affliction going on on both sides. And what, what did Timothy do? He helped encourage. <laughs> he helped encourage. Okay, Joshua 1. This is a, a familiar story that we've seen where 
what do we know? That Moses, he, he was the leader of the children of Israel, helped bring them out of captivity. But then this great leader, Moses, he ends up dying. Okay? And now, guess what? Because God always needs a leader, God always needs leaders, he needed to appoint someone else. Well, guess whose turn it was? It was Joshua's turn. And let's just put into perspective, like, this is millions of people. So it's not just like, oh, come lead this, you know, group of 20 over here. This is millions of people that he's now having the responsibility to lead. So let's look, Joshua 1, 6, and this is what God tells him. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. And I've heard um, Pastor Jeremy Pearsons talk about this, how when God... He doesn't just throw around the word be. Like, hey, hey, Mona, be courageous. When he says light to be, what happened? Light was. So when God's telling Joshua, hey, be strong, be courageous, it's not just like, hey, by the way, Joshua, be strong, be courageous. This is in his very words is that grace and ability to what? To be strong and to be courageous. Why? Because he knew he would need it to do what God had called him to do. So he tells him here, be strong, be courageous. And then we see again in verse 7, he says, only be strong and very courageous. So what's he telling him again? Be strong, be courageous. Then we see in verse 9, he tells him again, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. So God tells him multiple times here to do what? To be strong and to be courageous. What was God doing? He was encouraging Joshua. And encouragement, sometimes we hear that word and go, oh, they just need a little encouragement. And we just look at encouragement as just this fun, cute little word. But this is actually a biblical thing. There's actually a spiritual thing behind encouragement or courage. It's a God thing. Okay. And then I want to skip down. So God's telling Joshua to be strong, be courageous. But then I want to look um, in the same chapter, Joshua 118. And this is the people actually talking back um, to Joshua in, and a couple of verses before that. But verse 18 says, whoever rebels against your command, so this is the people t- talking to Joshua, and does not heed your words and all that you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. Isn't it interesting that God wasn't the only one telling Joshua to be strong and to be courageous? He also had the people he was leading saying, Joshua, We need you to be strong and to be courageous. Wow, this is powerful. That not only is God using these words of courage to Joshua, but the people, the children of Israel, are using these words to encourage their leader and to say, hey, we need you. Yes, Moses is gone. I'm sure there was, you know, think about it. A leader that they love, that they followed, I'm sure... Obviously, emotions are in play. And what are they saying? These people are now saying, Joshua, you're the guy. You got to do it. Why? Because God knew he needed this. He needed the encouragement to do what God's called him to do. So tonight, if you need encouragement, this is what God's saying to you. Not just be strong, be courageous. He's saying be, like be. You have the ability to be courageous. You have the ability to be strengthened in in life, in whatever you're going through. That word be, be strong, be courageous, be strengthened. Encouragement is kind of like gas in your car. What does gas in your car on a road trip allow you to keep doing? Continue down the road. Continue to where you're going, right? So when you, you are on a road trip and you see, you know, your gas light go on and you know you need to pull over for gas, you're not like wailing and crying and going, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Are you? No, what do you just know that you need to do? I need to pull into the gas station, 
get some gas because when I get some gas and fill up my tank, I can continue going on my trip. Well, you know what the enemy wants to get us to do? When situations come or that gas tank starts to get a little empty in life, he wants us to just sit and moan and complain and gripe Oh my gosh, look what's happening to me. What is wrong? But do you know in you, you have everything you need to do what he's called you to do. And we're going to look at three ways tonight that you can fill the tank. Or in other words, encouragement, courage can be there. And you don't have to sulk and you don't have to stay in a pit and you don't have to stay down under circumstances. You can encourage yourself in the Lord. Okay, so let's look here at 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 7. Okay, and it says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. Just as the sufferings of Christ are ours in abundance, so also are our comfort in abundance through Christ. And actually there's other translations that this word comfort can be interchanged with encouragement. So what's this saying? There's afflictions, there's stuff coming your way, but you know what? You can be encouraged. There's an abundance of encouragement. Isn't that exciting to know that I'm never out, run out of courage or encouragement? There's always an abundance. Just when you feel like the tank is dry, just when you feel like the tank is empty, there's encouragement for you. Don't lose hope. Amen. The enemy wants you to just wallow in self-pity. I've been there. All of us have probably been there. Wallow in self-pity and woe is me and this is hard and yada, yada, yada. But you know what? It's just one choice away. One decision away. Okay, so you may be asking, that's great, Pastor Evan, encouragement, encourage, and yay. But where do we get this? Well, you know what the Word tells us. Aren't you thankful that we have answers in the Word of God? So that when we need something, we have it through the Word. Okay, so number one, number one ways that we um, can be encouraged and where we get um, encouragement is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is an encourager. Okay, so we saw earlier that Paul sent um, Timothy, a human being, to encourage them in their faith. And I don't really know how you say this word, but perikaleo is a Greek word. And it means to call near, to call to one side, to call alongside, or for the purpose of comforting. So this word... um, was the word comforter, and it was used when Paul sent Timothy, and it says that he encouraged them. It could also be translated comforted them, and that's the Greek word perikaleo. And this, um, Paul sent Timothy to their side to establish and encourage them in their faith. We saw that. But this same word perikaleo is the same word used to describe the Holy Spirit in John 14, 15, and 16. Isn't this awesome? So let's look at this, John 14, 16. This is in the Amplified. And this is, I love um, this particular translation of this verse because it just is very descriptive of the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So let's just paint this picture. Jesus is with the disciples, and now he's saying, hey, it's better that I go. And they're probably going, what? What do you mean it's better that you go? Like, It's really awesome having you here. And I really can't imagine how it could be better that you go. So Jesus is spending really three chapters here of explaining to the disciples and talking to them about the benefit of the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit's role is and who he is. 
So this says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter. So what do we see? The disciples were with Jesus. Jesus was this for them. He was a comforter. He was an encourager to them. But now he's saying, hey, I have to go, but it's okay, because I'm going to send another one who's going to do the same thing for you. So another comforter, and here's the descriptive words of what this means, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby, that he may remain with you forever. Now, the disciples probably couldn't see it in this moment because Jesus is physically present with them, but Jesus can only be in one place at one time. So what the beauty of the Holy Spirit is, is he's not only going to be with you forever, but he's also with you all the time, wherever you go. This is a promise we can grab a hold of, that I don't have to have Jesus physically present here to encourage me. Why? Because he's given me the gift of the Holy Spirit, who is that for me all the time, no matter where I'm at, no matter what situation I'm in, what is he doing? He is speaking to me everything that the Father has said. You talk about the greatest encourager on planet Earth and who is 100% good at his job description, never messes up and never fails, that's the Holy Spirit. And he is our helper, he is our comforter, he is our encourager. He brings us the word. How many of you have been in a situation before or a circumstance and the Holy Spirit is so faithful to bring you what you need right when you need it? Well, what is that? Encouragement to what? Keep going, to continue. So the gift of the Holy Spirit is awesome. So Jesus had to go so that the encourager or the Holy Spirit could come. And like I said, he does perfect at his job. And we have the encourager, like the best one. Like people, yes, God uses people, but you have the best encourager of the Holy Spirit all the time with you. Okay, so number two, how, um, how to um, get encouragement is from yourself. Okay, from yourself. So how many of you know there are just sometimes, and obviously, yes, we partner with the Holy Spirit. This isn't just something we produce by ourselves. How many of you know everything we need to do by faith, right? So when I say from yourself, this isn't a work of mustering up something. This is in partnership with the Holy Spirit, okay? But there are times when you have to encourage yourself, which means it's a perfect storm. There is not 80 people around you going, go, go, you're doing awesome, you're doing great. Actually, some of those people may be going, what's your problem? Or just cricket, cricket, nothing. And what do we have to learn? This is part of being spiritually mature to know, you know what I got to do right now? I need to encourage myself in the Lord. In other words, if I'm in the pit and I'm staying here, it's because I'm allowing myself to stay here and I'm not encouraging myself. Okay. Let's look at an example of this. Um, This is uh, David in 1 Samuel 36. And this is after Ziklag. Sorry, I don't remember the exact. um, But basically, they conquer this uh, people opposed to David and his mighty men. And they take over this city when David and his mighty men aren't there. And they steal their wives and children. They basically, like, ruin everything. And so David and his mighty men get to this town, and they realize what has happened. And it says that they cried so hard they had no more tears to cry. How many of you have been there before where you just start crying, 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 crying? So what is this? This is a horrible situation. This is a situation where they are very discouraged, angry, frustrated, discouraged, right? And then it actually says that David's mighty men... (laughs) Because they were so discouraged and because they were so frustrated, it said that they actually then wanted to hurt David. And you know what? This is, this is what discouragement and like self-pity and stuff does. It 
It also, like, looks at who you can blame. Have you ever been there? I have plenty of times where you're discouraged and you're frustrated and you're looking and going, it's not my fault. Whose fault is this? Why am I feeling this way? Why am I down? Why am I frustrated? Why am I whatever in this pit? And who can I put the blame on? Uh, Ploy of the enemy. Right? So because these men were frustrated, now they're going, David, this is your fault. So David basically not only has the enemy against him, but now the guys that are with him are against him. So he is literally all by himself. Let's look at 1 Samuel 36. So it says, David was greatly distressed, for the men spoke of stoning him because of the souls of them all were bitterly grieved, each man for his sons and daughters. But David hunkered down and sobbed and cried and felt bad for himself. David yelled and screamed at his mighty men and said, what's your problem? It's not my fault. It's your fault. No, what did David do? And you know what is amazing to me? Verse 6, it wasn't just David's mighty men that were distressed. What does the very front of this verse say? David was greatly distressed. So it's not like David was on the high of highs and like, oh, it's easy to worship and to praise and to encourage myself. He was just as bad as the guys around him were. And you know what he chose to do? But David encouraged and strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Wow. What an opportunity that David had to either sulk and moan and complain and be upset or to do what? To encourage himself. And what did encouraging himself do? It strengthened him. Who did he do it with? In the Lord. Now, it doesn't say exactly how David did this, but I know the times that I've encouraged myself in the Lord, it can look like praising and worshiping him. It can look like reminding yourself of his faithfulness in times past of where he's He's brought you from, what he's brought you out of, what he's brought you into. Sometimes it's looking at yourself in the mirror, making your flesh do some stuff that it doesn't want to do. And sometimes you actually have to physically get up. And sometimes you actually have to physically say some words that you don't want to say because your flesh is screaming. So David encouraged himself. So I put this because there was times in my past where I've had to do this. Get up out of bed, open the shades, turn on the lights, get in front of the mirror, and say, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Talk to yourself. And you know what your flesh is going to say? You look really stupid. Why are you doing this right now? This is idiotic. Do you know what people would think if they saw you? But you know what? You have to encourage yourself, and you have to put your flesh down. There was times that I danced around my room, and I probably looked like an idiot. But you know what I was doing? Encouraging myself in the Lord. There's times where you're going to have to shout, give a shout of praise. I don't know what it looks like, but you can ask the Holy Spirit, and he will show you. And when he shows you to do something, do it, because he knows what you need. Not every time is it going to be running around your room. Not every time is it going to be declaring the word. Not every time is it going to be turning on praise music. But whatever he tells you to do in the moment, do it. Encourage yourself. Don't hide away and be quiet. That's the worst thing you can do is to just sit and think. Ugh. Yuck. Sitting and thinking gets us nowhere. It actually makes it way worse. So please, don't be quiet. Don't sit and think. Use the word. Encourage yourself. Remind yourself of his faithfulness. Look up scriptures on his faithfulness. And you know what? Tell yourself you're not quitting. 
Sometimes you have to look in yourself in the mirror and say, you're not quitting. You're not quitting. You're not allowed to quit, and you're not quitting. Paul also told Timothy to do what? To stir up the gift in you. So how many of you know that must mean that that gift and that fire on the inside isn't always stirred up? (laughs) If he's telling us you have to stir it up, that means it's not always stirred up. And you have to stir yourself up. Okay. So to continue, you're going to have to encourage yourself. How many of you know excitement wears off? Passion dies down. You know, sometimes those things that the Lord shows you or things you see in your heart or you're making progress. And have you ever seen that like momentum in a game happens? And within 30 seconds, that hype and that momentum can go to... We're not supposed to live off of hype and momentum. We're supposed to live off of the word of God and encourage ourselves with the word and keep going. Okay, number three, a way to encourage is from each other. We get encouragement from each other. So you and I are supposed to be a constant supply channel of encouragement. So why don't you say that? I am a supply channel of encouragement. Yes, you are. And you know what the enemy would want to tell you? Oh, no, I can't be that. I'm not good at that. That's not my personality. It's not who I am. I'm going through tough times, this or that. But you know what? Because Jesus lives in your heart, because you have him in there, you have encouragement in there. And it's meant to be given. So how many of you know you come across people all the time who are ready to throw in the towel? And you know what? Many times you might know that those people are ready to throw in the towel. Other times you have no idea because people are pretty good these days at hiding what's really going on, especially in church and putting on a church face and just acting like everything's great. But you know what? This is why the Holy Spirit's in you because the Spirit of God is in you to give encouragement to someone else. And he knows what they need when they need it. And sometimes we can even talk ourselves out of it because it's like, oh, you know, if I tell them that, who, it's not even that big of a deal. Or they look like they're totally doing great. Why would I need to say that to them? Right? We look at all the natural stuff instead of what? Being spirit-led. And what he's telling us to do, what he's telling us to say, where he's telling us to be, what he's telling us. So that one word of encouragement, back to the gas tank analogy, that one word of encouragement could be that person's gas to keep them what? Continuing down the road or the path that God has for their life. So instead of quitting because of your word of encouragement, they continue on. And I have had those examples over and over, and I think of specifically years back, And pulling up to my mailbox and literally right then being like, I am done. I am quitting. I don't know where we need to go, but I don't think I know anyone in New Mexico. And that sounds like a great place that I could move and just disappear off the planet. Like, really, it's funny, but it it was real. It was very real. And it was that moment I opened the mailbox and someone had mailed me a card and just wrote what God told them to write. And I remember just bawling, like bawling, bawling. But you know what? A good bawling. (laughs) Like I needed this. I don't know how they knew. God knew that I needed it right when I needed it. And you know what it caused me to do? Not not move to New Mexico. (laughs) But it what did it do? It helped me continue in the plan that God had for my life. And I'm so thankful for that person obeying. And giving the encouragement that I needed. Listening to the Holy Spirit. And you know what? That person could have probably thought, why do I need to write this to Pastor Evan? She probably could have. But I'm thankful that she listened. So beyond church, let's be a people who does not discourage. But let's be a people who encourage each other. Encourage one another. Christians should be the most encouraged and the most encouraging people. 
Okay, 1 Thessalonians 5.11 out of the NIV says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. So what is this? This is a verse that tells you the will of God for your life. What is the will of God for your life? To encourage one another. So you can no longer say, I don't know what God's plan is for my life. Because here's a verse that tells you, you're to encourage one another. Build each other up. Words are powerful. And words are either life or death. So what you speak over someone is either going to encourage them or discourage them. Be an encourager of people. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25 This is out of the New American Standard Bible. It says, let's consider how to encourage one another in love and good deeds. And I just want to pause on that. Let's consider how to encourage one another in love and good deeds. When was the last time we we just sat and considered how? Like, took five minutes and thought and asked the Holy Spirit, Lord, who can I encourage How can I encourage them in love and in good deeds? What can I do to encourage someone? Because I guarantee you, if you took time to ask the Holy Spirit, who do I need to encourage, he wouldn't go, oh, no one. You're great. You don't need to encourage anybody today. Everyone is fine. Right? If we haven't been encouraging someone, it's because we haven't been listening. Because there's probably a whole host of people He will tell you to encourage. So that could be our homework. To take a few minutes and consider how can I encourage someone else. And then it says this, not abandoning our own meeting together as is the habit of some people, but encouraging one another. There we see it again. All the more as you see the day approaching. So this is talking about coming together, meeting together. And what did that verse earlier talk about when Paul sent Timothy? What did it do? It encouraged them. So you know what? Church is as much about when you come as being strengthened as it is encouraging for you to do what? To keep going. But you know what's awesome is you are also able to encourage someone else when you come into God's house. And you should be thinking of when you walk in here, how, what can I say to someone? What can I do to encourage them? Because this is the body. And yes, texts are great, and yes, letters in the mail, like I talked about, different ways. But man, what a powerful time when we come together in God's house, face-to-face, where I can lean over to Joni and say, Joni, it's going to be okay. You're, you're going to get through. You can keep going. Those encouraging words that I need and that you need from each other. But if we just walk in and sit down and just think about my day and how everything's gone and how horrible it is and life's just on myself, that's, a, that's not a good thing. Let's consider how to encourage one another. Okay, Acts 4.36. It says, and Joseph, or Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement. So this man, named by the apostles, he actually had a name. It was Joseph. But he was named by the apostles, man of, or son of encouragement. So why do you think the apostles chose this name for this man? Probably because he encouraged all the time. Wouldn't that be a good thing to be said about you? Like, man, that person just always encouraged. Every time I saw him, they just were encouraging. Well, this is what Barnabas was. He was son of encouragement. Okay, um, let's look at Acts 4, 34 through 35. And it says, um, Nor was there anyone among them who lacked, for all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold, and laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each as anyone had need. So what do we see here? Another form of encouraging, not just through words, is through giving. How many of you have ever been encouraged before because someone gave to you? 
all of us could raise our hands because someone came through and gave you something. And don't minimize what God tells you to give. Whether it's cash, whether it's an item, whether it's whatever it might be, don't underestimate that because you never know the encouragement that that could bring to someone. I think of, uh, actually, Pastor Nate, the, the watch that someone gave you that said you'll always be on time or whatever, it was a watch. And they had a word of encouragement that came with the watch. So it was a physical thing that someone gave him with a word of encouragement. And you know what? That still, he still remembers that, and he still talks about it. And what is the amazing thing about the encouragement that God gives is it's eternal, Like these, we take it so lightly sometimes, but when God tells you to say something, what he tells you to say, that's eternal. And that continues to speak. So that gift, that, those words, those, that money, that whatever it is that you gave because the Holy Spirit told you to give it to them, doesn't just speak to them one time. Oftentimes the Holy Spirit brings it back again and again to bring encouragement again. So don't underestimate those things. Okay, Acts eleven twenty two through 24. It says, Then the news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. And when he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all with purpose of heart that they should continue with the Lord. So what do we see? Barnabas was living up to his name. What did they do? They're like, oh, these people need encouragement. Let's send Barnabas. He's he's the son of encouragement. And when he came, what did he do? Oh, guys, yeah, I know. It's really rough. It's going to, oh, man. No, what did he do? He used his words to encourage. Let our words be encouragement. So one sign, and it says this about him. Oh, verse 24, I want to read that. It says, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. So what do we see? The gift of encouragement that you each carry wasn't just Barnabas here. This is something we all carry because the Holy Spirit lives in us. So that gift of encouragement that you carry causes other people to be added to the Lord. Because do you know me encouraging Michelle and her continuing to keep on going affects the lives that she's called to reach. So even though I may not physically like know of the people that get added to the Lord through my encouragement to Michelle, it happens. So your encouragement matters because it's a trickle effect. But what I also love about this verse is that it says he was, that Barnabas was a good man full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. So when you're full of the Holy Spirit and you're full of faith, you are full of encouragement. Because that's what we see he came and did. And right after that, it says that he was full of the Holy Spirit and full of faith. Okay. Um, So have you ever been about to quit and you get encouraged And then you are nowhere near quitting. (laughs) Have you ever been there? You're about to quit, but somehow you're encouraged. And then it just gives you like that juice where you're like, I'm not quitting now. That's what encouragement does. Or like, this sounds really funny and it's probably a silly analogy, but hopefully you get it. But like you've been working out for one week. It's like nothing, right? And someone comes up and was like, oh, man, you look so great. And, man, you're like, you think you're like, I look awesome. What What does that cause you to do? Not keep going at the gym, right? That encouragement, it doesn't cause you to be like, oh, I look great. Okay, I'll just quit. No, it causes you to say, hey, I've been at this a week. I can keep going. That's what that encouragement does. Now, that was something like. A silly analogy, but I'm just saying that those, that's how powerful your words are. It causes people to continue or to not continue when you discourage. So we are called to encourage. So say that. I am called to encourage. 
And I wanted to just share on this um, toward the end that sometimes we can look and say, you know, well, I'm the one who needs encouraging, like, and I, we've all been there before where you're maybe in a battle or you're in a fight and you know that you need encouragement. And this is not going to be what you want to hear. But I have lived this. When I was in my lowest of lows and I needed encouragement and I felt like I needed everyone to come encourage me. You know what the Holy Spirit told me to do? Go find someone to encourage. Because the enemy wants you to get to look at yourself and how, what was me? And life's hard and whatever. No one's reaching out to me. No one loves me. You know, no one has done this for me. No one's done that. I thought they were my friends and they didn't do this and they didn't do that. Instead of how can I encourage someone? And I remember during that time, Every time I walked in here, Lord, what can I do to encourage someone? What can I do to, what can I say to someone? What can I do? Holy Spirit, show me. And what you tell me to do, what you tell me to give, what you tell me to write, what you tell me to say, I'm going to do it. And you know what? It wasn't too long till I got out of that pit. Because my eyes started getting off myself and I started bringing encouragement to others. So Proverbs 11.25, let's go to this one. It says this, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. This is a promise that you can stand on. When you refresh someone else with words or you encourage someone else, you can bet that you will be encouraged yourself. I think of Timothy when when they sent Timothy to encourage the believers, and then he came back and told Paul, and Paul was encouraged. I guarantee you, because both sets of people were encouraged through Timothy, Timothy was very encouraged. It wasn't like this guy was just left out, and he came back like, he was encouraged. It stirred him up. So when you encourage someone else, you get encouraged yourself. Okay, let's go ahead and stand. And I wanted to read something as, as we um, close here. And one of the best ways that I think you can encourage to is just is to um, sometimes is to be physically present. What you see Paul doing a lot of was actually physically sending people. Which is why coming into church and being with other believers, being in God's house is so vital and so important because not only are you able to encourage others, but you get encouraged too. And one of the greatest ways that you can encourage is just to be there, be there for people. When you know they're going through something, be available, be present, be willing to help, be willing to hear from the Lord and give them what he tells you to give them. Okay, so I wanted to read this and we can just um, close our eyes. And actually, I didn't have this in in my notes right before I came up. The Lord reminded me of this prophecy that we had. And actually, this was before we even changed our name to Beyond Church. It was still Living Word River Valley. Um, And Jeremy Pearson's prophesied this. It was back in 2011. And he said this, I thank you, Lord, for every life represented in here. And by faith in you and faith in the word and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare over every one of them, and this you can take and you can receive, for them to be strong, to be courageous, and to be bold in the Lord Jesus Christ. I rebuke loneliness, I rebuke discouragement, I rebuke fear in Jesus' name, and you get out of their lives, now and forever. And in Jesus' name, you be bold. You be bold about your future. You be bold about your calling. You be strong about what the Lord has equipped you to do. And don't you ever be afraid of it for the rest of your life. You step up to your future, not with uncertainty, but with absolute certainty in the word of God, that he will do for you what he said he would do. He is for you and not against you. He is with you always, and you have a God who loves you. I declare that over you now in Jesus' name. 
And then he said, the word of the Lord came to him and said, ask them on my behalf if they will do me a favor. Don't quit. Don't quit your marriage. There might be somebody in here tonight and you are right on the edge of that. Don't quit that. It's been tough. It's been hard, but don't you quit. Don't you quit. Endure. You hold on to the love of God. You walk in the love of God. You make his love the boundaries in which you exist and refuse to yield to the flesh. Choose instead to yield to the spirit of God in you. And you will walk in love with him or with her. And you refuse to quit. Don't throw away your boldness. This thing is about to turn out right. Don't quit that job he assigned you to. Don't quit that church that he assigned you to. Don't you quit. Amen. Can we all make that fresh decision tonight that I'm not going to quit? Just say it out of your mouth. I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting. It doesn't matter. The circumstances... The situations, I'm not quitting. And I will be an encourager of others. And I will encourage myself. And thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the great encourager. And you give me exactly what the Father is saying. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Aren't you thankful? We have the Holy Spirit. You have the ability and everything in you to encourage yourself. And then you can be encouraged by others, but you can also encourage others. Amen. Be an encourager. So think today. Think tomorrow. What can I do to encourage somebody? More than one person. Specifically, probably in here would be awesome. In this local church that God's called you to. Lord, who do you want to encourage through me? What do you want me to say? What do you want me to give? What do you want me to do? And be that encourager that helps someone else continue in the plan that God has for their life. Amen. All right. Well, we love you all, and we will see you Sunday.